Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 11. We're going to, the rest of the chapter, going to look at um, God's word among us. See, we've been looking at uh, God's work for us in, in verses seven through uh, 4 through 7. God's work in us in verses 8 through 9. God's work through us in verse 10. Now, uh, God's work among us in verses 11 through 22. As we're going to look at um, God's work in the church. Uh, Jew and Gentile. Um, Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the in the flesh by hands that at that uh, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. And what a horrible place to be in. Um, this aliens from the commonwealth of Israel in, um, in, in the, the root word in Greek is, uh, it usually refers to a city with walls. And the idea is that Israel was a walled city and you were outside the walls. So we were outside the walls of, of promise, uh, from the commonwealth of Israel uh, moving on, verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once, who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the wall of separation. So that again, that wall, you were outside the wall. Well, God broke down the wall and there, there's nothing separating now. For he himself is our peace. It says in uh, the beginning of verse 14 and Romans 5, 1 says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, before we received Christ, we were at war against God. We were at odds against him. We were uh, rebelling against him. But now when we receive Christ, we receive his redemption for us, his propitiation. And, and now we have peace. Uh, but I, I realize that some, not everybody that has been saved, that, that has peace with God, there, there's times where we don't experience his peace. Uh, we can be saved and so frustrated with this world that we're, we're not experiencing his peace. Uh, see, because in Romans 5, 1, it talks about being at peace with God. Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 talks about the peace of God. Romans 5, 1 talks about peace with God. That's justification. We, 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 have, been, we have peace with God now through Jesus Christ. But we don't always experience the peace of God. And and that could be because our mind is so foggy or our mind is so uh, filled with things around us that it takes our minds off eternity and we lose the peace of God. And the peace of God comes through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Um, and he made... He who has b made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Again, like I said, it means in the in the Greek it meant like a, a wall and you were outside the wall. But he's broken down the wall. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3.11 where, uh, where there is neither Jew nor uh, no, neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, uh, scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And and you look at the church and you look how there's so many people within the church that such a mix, like my pastor, mixed bag of lollies, that there's people that would not normally have hung out with each other, but we all have this common love for Christ and the middle wall separation has been torn down and we're all in Christ now verse 15 having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments being contained in ordinances so as to create in himself one new man from the two 
thus making peace. He abolished uh, the law, the law of, of commandments uh, by fulfilling them, by fulfilling their righteous commandments. He said he didn't come to uh, to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Uh, the commandment says that the soul that sins, it shall die. Thus the, the law of the commandments had condemned us all of, of, of us to death for all have sinned through his, uh, but through Jesus' substitutionary death for me, for you, for us, he abolished the law of commandment that demanded my death. Colossians 2 verses 14 through 15, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Romans 10.4 For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Acts 13, verses 38-39 through 39, Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Awesome. Verse 16, And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the, Im the enmity. Again, Jesus reconciles both Jew and Gentile in him. Uh, all need him, Romans 3 says. Verse 17, And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. He preached peace to you. Jesus said in uh, John 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace that he gives us and leaves with us. Um, it's the peace that the world cannot understand, the world cannot offer to us. And again, in Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified freely by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He came and preached peace to us. Not to, He said He didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. We're already condemned without Him. He just came to save us. Verse 18, For through Him we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. And here is another blessing that is ours through Christ. That is access to the Father. To the Jew in the Old Testament covenant, access to God was through the blood sacrifice offered by the priest. Uh, but God uh, God was separated by the veil in the temple. This was the, for the people's protection. Sinful man approaching the holy God would be destroyed. Um, but when Jesus died on the cross, uh, Matthew 7, uh, 27 verse 51 says that the veil of the temple was torn into from top to bottom. There is no more separation. God, and notice it, the veil toward from top to bottom. Again, that was God's work. It wasn't from bottom to top. It was from top to bottom. It was God's work and reconciled the world to himself. And because of the work that he's done, now in Christ, by his Holy Spirit, we have access to the Father.